This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. You and I haven't ever talked about this, but now feels like as good a time of any. Is it a little weird that this is your creation? This was your idea and it's still running and you're not involved. Does that feel a little weird? Is it almost like you've never been divorced, but you're around town and you see your ex and you're like, I remember them, but you know, they've moved on and they're happy and it's gotta be a little weird, right? This is your thing. And now it's gone for, for sure. And it's because of the evolution, you know, the, the processing, everything. But I really look at TNA from 2002 until the day Hulk Hogan w- was hired. It f- radically changed. Yeah. In so many ways. And you, you can literally go to the day. Well, fly, fly to Tampa with Dixie, had the conversations. The ink wasn't dried. It was just conversations, but it looked like his head in that direction. Eric was, I don't want to say in the shadows, but he, he was... Yes, a part of the deal, but only from the Hogan, you know, the, but the day Hulk got signed, the world changed. And I knew it. I knew it then that I know it was going to take the turns that it did. No way. I, I had some delusional optimism then and it continued, but, but it, it radically changed. So I really look at quote unquote, my baby or my kid or whatever it may be. And there's some jokes that people would pass me in the hall, <laughs> you know, before I left uh, about what happened, your baby, you know, what happened to that thing? But anyway, it changed and then it changed again and it changed again and it changed again. You know, there's, you know, and obviously, you know, I I wasn't a part of the core Billy Corrigan days and the Airlux days, you know, the, the 2017 component, but for it to still be going in the library and, um, you know, we'll call it the glory years. And I know this for, without question, because I know the numbers, like the back of the man, uh, I spent uh, 2013. I, I knew the numbers better than the controller at Panda knew. And, and they will tell you that to this day. I had to, because I had to get it ready. Uh, to, I had to answer every question Toby, T, Toby Key's team would fire at me and anybody else who came. So I knew ratings, I knew buy rates. I knew finances. I knew where they were in 2002, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I knew it. I, I, I got myself prepared and really dug in. So for it to be still going today is pretty cool. It, it really is, uh, you know? Um, well, and, and what's great about this discussion that we're having, and we've had for the last several weeks is Jeff. There's so many wrestling podcasts out there. Hell I know I create seven a week but a lot of them just come down to subjective. So like, you know, I'm familiar with real estate. So if we're going to appraise your house, you know, there's some objective stuff. How many bedrooms are there? How many bathrooms are there? How many square feet is it? Uh, is there a garage? How many cars? Is there a pool? You know, those type of things are very objective. They're not up for debate, but when it comes down to what's your house worth, well, that's very subjective. You know, I may value it different than another appraiser might. And I feel like most wrestling podcasts come down to a lot of objective discussion. Oh, this guy was the shits. Oh, that match wasn't very good. Oh, Meltzer gave it a quarter star too many, whatever. Uh, (laughs) but, but they're, they're, they're always talking about subjective stuff. And we got to talk about just stone cold facts here for three weeks. Here's what we did next. Here's how much money I invested. This was our strategy for the contracts. There was no like. Yeah, sure. I'm busting your balls about, oh, you're going to call the guys, the dicks, but by and large, (laughs) we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking a different objective approach. And I just, I loved it, man. And and I hope we do more of it. And I hope you dig out those old computers and I hope we can find some of those old financials and some of those old business plans. And we can continue to just talk about the business of the professional wrestling business. And don't get me wrong. We're going to talk about silly nonsense, creative and and vignettes and behind the, that'll be all your wrestling career. But when it comes to the TNA discussion, I like the idea of sure. We'll talk about some creative, but more importantly, why that creative exists, mm-hmm. you know, like I mean, you've never talked about this, but I know there's been criticism of your career that, oh, well, that re- only reason he started his own company. So he could be world champion. Well, I didn't know you owned world championship wrestling because you <laughs> became a world champion there. 
not when your dad was involved, not when, you know, you were related to the owner, not when you had the book, you were world champion in WCW, but me just knowing the way Vern's business was at the end of the AWA, he made Larry Zabisco the champ. And why did he do that? Well, Larry's his son-in-law. He realizes Larry's not going to up and leave him in the middle of the night, like me and Gene and Hulk Hogan and so many others did and go to work for Vince McMahon. So without me and you ever even discussing it, I'm sure when you're booking TNA out of your own wallet, it becomes a matter of, uh, well, I'm not leaving. So if I'm the champ, we'll get there in our story. But I'm just saying, I think there's so much of your career that people just look at subjectively. And we've had a lot of objective conversations for the last, I don't know, six or eight hours. Interesting. Yeah. That's it. Well said it's, uh, that, that component, we'll get into that. Um, it, it's like me holding up Vince. Yeah. Uh, it's preposterous. Okay. I started a company so I could be champion. Although the facts dispute that in, in so many ways. And the day we got Kurt Angle, I was never champion again. And, and the, the opportunities to drop the belt. Oh, Monty Brown should have been champion. No, in my opinion, right or wrong, this is a philosophy. Had we made him champion, that would have taken away his chase and he would have fallen flat of his face to make him champion at the time, you know, subjective decisions, but there's a philosophy behind that. And I could go down the list of Kevin Nash was going to be champion and he no showed a pay-per-view and he c- couldn't be there and, and this and that, but in hindsight, me holding on to that belt for that extended period of time, when I finally did drop it to sting meant a lot more was there it's the biggest, most pay-per-view buys ever sold. So it it is when you really get into story behind the story behind the story, you go, okay, okay. Maybe this does make some sense. So fun stuff, fun stuff to, to dig into. It is fun because a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Or, you know, oh, this is, you know, again, we're, we're debating the subjective discussion of creative, but we're doing it without really the benefit of knowing what's going on behind the scenes. And so you being in this seat now on the podcast allows us to understand the why. And I think that's what fascinates me most about wrestling is psychology. I want to know, we all know what happened. Hell we were watching and we all know when it happened. Although occasionally we may need our memory jogged here, there, but what we don't know is why. And this series is filling in those blanks and I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to next week. And hope you guys are too. By the way, uh, if you haven't already, go sign up, adfreeshows.com. You get all these shows early and ad free. You get tons of interactive experiences. Uh, we've got some fun stuff planned coming down the line, whether you're a TNA fan or not. Uh, it's just fun to pick Jeff's brain, and you're going to get more than ample opportunity to do that. And I want to thank everybody who uh, came out and supported us at Jimmy's Famous Seafood. It's always good to go to Jimmy's, even if you're just going for the crab cakes, right? Amen. Amen. Thomas Olstead. That's the name. Google. We'll, we'll get into that next week. We'll see you next week right here on my world. Thanks Conrad. You got to get excited. I've been saving people all those dollars. They can live in Z ride just flying out with that extra cash. And they can style and profile with a quick 10 minute phone call right now to four, two, five, zero, one, zero, That's four, two, five, zero, one, zero, five. Woo! Save with Conrad.com. I, I'm I'm just uh I don't know, it's just cool to get into your brain, you know, that you were interested in getting getting into the trades and all that, and you saw value in that. But to your point, you're not making any money with that. Let's talk about one of the money making efforts. We can sell tickets. Now, of course, selling tickets to the live event is a you know a line item and it could be a revenue driver, but it's not really where you're hoping to make your fortune. You're hoping to uh sort of cash in and hit it big with these pay-per-view buys. Was there a method to the madness before we know that ticket sales are soft? Were you thinking when you're making a budget now, if we can just cover this with our ticket sales, we'll be okay. What were you trying to defray or offset? If you would, you know, if I had to, you know, get out that old business plan and man, I hope I can find that kind of stuff. That'll be some good stuff, even for me to revisit, but, but you know, building cost, uh, talent, catering, so, so, some down and I don't say down and dirty, just a, a real base level of cost. 
probably not ca- ca- cover all of talent, but, but, you know, um, again, it, it's, it's all one big pie and, and being around, you know, uh, shows and promotions my whole life at this point, knowing that no matter where the money comes from, it all really goes in the same pie. Um, you know, that, that running small, you should call them spot shows, the, the, you know, the once a year, twice a year, you go into those markets and knowing that you can sell sponsorship that may cover all your expenses, or you may not sell any sponsorships, but you can sell a lot of tickets or, you know, if you do the right deal, you have the concession stands or, you know, whatever it may be, it, it's, there's multiple revenue sources. So I don't want to say that ticket sales, were just going to jump over on the expense side and say, I hope it covers <laughs> talent, building, rent, security, uh, insurance, uh, staff, you know, wh- whatever it may be. It, it, it was, uh, it was an overall number. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.